This film is Bethany, Bethany. and I play Aaron. Can I have Zach Ward on set immediately, please? All right, guys, wardrobe is clear. Makeup is clear. Move camera for a sec. Quiet, please. Lock it up. Aaron is Claire's husband. He's a uh, IT nerd, a bit of an Irish background, and that's it. When you first got the script, what were your thoughts? Oh, we wrote it. You wrote it. We both, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, James and James and I wrote both the scripts I did not know in a that. month. Okay. Uh, so, wow, month. actually, since I last saw you, uh, no. Actually, correction, you did not write it in a month. We did five days per script. Well, five on the first one, seven on the second. Really, it took longer for Bethany. Yeah, I it, did. it was shorter. No, it was longer. Oh. But so what we did? Might as well stand here. No, 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 no. I just want to please. Do. You're gonna you're gonna jump in anyways, and I don't want to I don't want to have to smack you on camera. Uh, so what happened was I had seen a film that I was not impressed with and it inspired me to do anything uh, it was the idea like don't let perfect be the enemy of good so I uh, called up James and like I'm pulling the trigger on this I've got a bunch of investors who put money into other films before my thought was let's jam it out and get it done so James had a distributor in front of his we talked to him he said specifically what he was looking for as opposed to making up a movie that you're like this is my passion project it was uh, here's what the distributor wants so it was haunted house uh, film with a ghost girl and inside that niche we could do whatever we wanted so we came up with about 12 different concepts pitched them to him he chose which ones he liked and then we wrote them and we literally wrote them over Christmas my girlfriend is very very kind and understanding so over Christmas we were locked in our offices sleeping there writing 17 hours a day jamming it out and we got uh, we wrote restoration in five days for the first draft and then Bethany we wrote in seven days and then we both went our separate ways to do our polishes on each so I we directed Restoration, he was going to direct Bethany. Uh, so I polished Restoration, he polished Bethany. So once we had that, uh, we already had the distribution, I talked to my investors, and at this budget, we had a good MG, minimum guarantee, so it wasn't that much of a risk financially. Um, it was a real thing to move forward with, so we did. And it's, you know, it's micro-budget films, it's hard. Uh, it's really hard. <laughs> But we have fantastic crews and wonderful people that we're working with, and then we have begged for every favor we could get. So we then crewed up, cast up, locked it down, and started shooting. And we did them back to back. So we did, we're doing six day weeks. Our restoration was 14 shooting days, six day weeks, uh, then three days down, and then started Bethany. First 14 shooting days. So you write the script. And to you, every word is brilliant. And then you have the actors read the script, and sometimes you realize that it didn't work. And you just scratch it. You just scratch it out, and neither James nor I get super upset about anything, especially if it just sounds weird when someone says it. We're like, yeah, just cut that line. There's certain things that you you make sure to work because they layer story and they're important for the puzzle pieces, but if we write the word, Oh, baby, I love you. I love you too, baby. We're like, okay, cut out the baby. Thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. All right, cut out the two thank yous and just move forward. So when you were locked in the office together, what were you listening to? What music? He listens to classical music. Yeah, I listen to Chopin and uh, Beethoven, and he listens to movie scores. So eventually, at first we were having him playing at the same time, and like it was like just getting really annoying. <laughs> yeah. And so then we both just started putting on headphones and, and doing it. And we were we were actually living. Yeah. We got blow up mattresses. We lived in the office. For, yeah. Literally shut the doors through Christmas and yeah. just stayed there and wrote everything. Again, thanks to my girlfriend for being so understanding. Very understanding. Yeah, she's awesome. Awesome. So that was how we did it. And it was funny because the office is, I'd be in one room, he'd be in the other one, and we just email it back and forth with the headphones in and come over and be like, hey, dude, I emailed you that scene. Yeah, okay, I got it. And then go back to the other place. And well, no, at first we were right next to each other and we were writing it and doing that. And then we just, after being locked in an office for like, I don't know, what, like 14 days or something? No, we, we uh, it was five days. We, we oh, wrote, it felt like 20. <laughs> yes, so after being locked yeah. in an office together with brick walls, <laughs> yeah. you just don't want to, it's the same office you did his interview in. Yeah. So after being in that, like, cooped up place. Well, and the whole area. So we had yeah. that whole area to use. Like, so we, we, uh, we just cabin didn't want to be in the same room <laughs> yeah. for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You make the movie a bunch of different times. You come up with a concept and write it. That's your first time making the movie. Then you shoot the movie. Then you 
edit the movie, then you score the movie. So you're really making the movie four times, you know? And throughout the process, you the thing that you thought was going to be awesome, that was okay. That other thing that you didn't think was going to be amazing was fantastic. So you have these happy accidents, especially when you're doing something with such a brief turnaround um, and no prep time that you're finding happy accidents. Actually, at this point, we've got an amazing crew who's done not only doing Bethany, but also did restoration. So the, uh, I think it's, it's smoothed itself out. Everybody has gotten along, figured out if they like each other, if they don't like each other, you know, walked away from the people they don't like, hung out with the people they do like. Uh, they're all professionals. It's not like someone has a major tantrum and sits down and pouts about it. So uh, the producing aspect for me was far more uh, daily job in the beginning, getting them, raising the money, closing distribution deals, getting all the contracts signed, setting up the legal situations, ensuring that my investors are not exposed to lawsuits, making sure that everybody's protected, that all those mechanisms are in place legally before you pull the trigger on something so that you don't go to jail or lose your house and blah, blah, blah. But once we're here, then we also have a bunch of people who are our associate producers and co-producers and production coordinators, and it's their job to handle that. So I don't micromanage because that would just be stupid. Even though I, we wrote both scripts, when it came to Bethany, James had done a rewrite polish, uh, tweaked out things that he wanted to focus on, and then did an entire script breakdown, analyzing it from his own perspective. And he really raised the emotional values in the scenes above what we had originally written and delved into it and gave it a different sense of meaning. So. For Bethany, it's I'm le letting him be my director as opposed to me telling him what I want to do. I'm letting him say, okay, this is the moment and this is how this reflects on the dynamic of the relationship. So play this beat as opposed to that one. Okay. Whereas on restoration, I knew what I wanted to uh, be done and they were my decisions. So I'm directing myself to not suck or um, directing my actors to find that subtlety in the performance that is based upon different emotion than what's written on the page. So I let James do his job and on restoration I did my job. When you know when we wrote the, the script I I like to I like people I like to watch actors who are playing roles of people that I would want to hang out with. That way especially in um, a horror film suspense horror film, um, then you care what happens to it. So there's a couple ways to do that. I, I think it's the old save the cat moment where you see someone do something generous or kind and therefore you feel an affiliation with them. I also think that you, that can be done. He's really fine. This is Allison. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, nice. Allison is awesome. Thank you, sweetie. You're welcome. I think also the save the cat moment can be done with comedy. And the witty banter back and forth between people, the, the interplay, and then you feel like you would want to hang out with them. I think Adam Sandler's proven that point in his films, and so I just try to translate that into something that's not a comedy. And what are we, uh, what's for dinner tonight? Uh, right now this is a snack uh, of meat and celery and carrots and hummus. Nice, little ranch dressing. Little ranch dressing, yeah. Kinda highfalutin for a micro budget film.